I want to talk about presentism in terms of avoidant personality disorder. And in the long, illustrious tradition of YouTube videos, I'm sort of going to co opt the term for my own sort of interpretation. Um, what presentism is, is basically uh, not being able to see past current day present ideas um, and uh, basically uh, interpreting everything past and forward based on the prevailing feeling of right now. So for example, um, what do they call it? The cancel culture? Like going back and saying, oh my goodness, this person was actually horrible we thought he was great, but he's terrible. And now we've got to like see him in our current terms and not in, you know, the way that, and I, I if I bring up an, a specific example, then it's very possible that's going to detract from what I'm talking about. Um, and start a debate that I'm really not interested in having. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's basically, either looking into historical figures that were considered heroes and saying, well, actually, look, all these things they did were terrible. Or, um, and, I mean, yeah. And, or going into the future and saying, you know, we're going to have to judge everything that happens in the future based on what's happening right now. Um, I'm trying to avoid, like, political type things but basically yeah if you look at current politics in at least in the united states presentism you know that um we're gonna dig in and uh go with this one radical idea and just make it more and more and more radical because that's the way everything's going and they can't conceptualize a different way or that it will change and, uh, you know, that, that sort of thing, that's presentism. Now that I've completely brought politics in and distracted everybody. Um, but I think that happens on an individual basis in people's lives too. And it's sort of like the evil, you know, stepsister of uh, mindfulness. Mindfulness, what you do is, um, you pull yourself out of ruminating or catastrophizing, which is one is in the past and one is in the future. It's basically the same thing. It's worrying about something that's not happening right now that you have no control over because either it's in the past and it's over or it's in the future and it hasn't happened yet. Um, so you use mindfulness to pull yourself back into the now and let the rumination go. That is very good coping technique for people to um, figure out how to do in their own lives. However, the evil stepsister side of it uh, is people, and I got so sucked into this personally, I you have no idea. And I think a lot of people, a lot of people do. And I think it's one of the reasons why um, the depression is so, like I'm, diagnosed with major depressive disorder that is treatment resistant. Sounds scary. Um, and basically it is um, a very normal and natural reaction to having avoidant personality disorder, in my opinion. Um, not a chem chem brain chemical imbalance medications don't work. Um, and, and it's just, that's what life is. Um, but I think that one of the major reasons why life is like that is because I can't see any changes happening in my life. I think that what's happening right now is what's going to happen from now until the end of time. Um, I've gone into therapy in the past and I've said, and people think I'm kind of nuts and cracked, but seriously, that the most helpful thing a therapist can do 
is point out, look, you're changing through time and you're, you know, you're making these improvements and this is not how you were acting three months ago. This is not, you know, what you were doing two years ago. Um, I was for about five years, I, I basically took care of my son and took care of my parents. And I was like, I can't live like this anymore. I mean, it is a very stressful situation for anybody, but especially how I was being treated. I mean, I really, I was like this, I can't, I can't, I can't live with it. And it, it, it seriously, and it sounds bizarre. Like, I mean, I knew that my son was going to graduate high school. What did I think? My parents are going to live forever. I could not conceptualize a time when I wasn't doing exactly that, that I wasn't taking care of both of my parents and that I was, you know, and it was just getting worse and worse and worse and that I was taking care of my son and he was getting worse and worse. I couldn't even, you know, I mean, and it sounds, sorry if you can hear the cat, by the way, um, it sounds completely nuts to say that being totally by myself is so much better than having immediate family near me. Um, I'm running into it now, um, with some medical things I'm going through, um, that they're like, you need a support system. And I'm like, uh, uh, you know, I have a son with, with autism. He, he can't, he can't do anything to help me. You know, my parents, if they were alive, would be in their 80s. Again, sorry about the cat. They wouldn't be able to do anything except maybe worry. They wouldn't be able to make me feel better about anything. They wouldn't be able to help me with anything. And come on. <laughs> Just because you have people there does not mean they're going to be a support system. And um, in my case, my life has been, you know, leaps and bounds. I, I can I mean, it's terrible to say, and I really feel like bad to say, and I, I don't want anybody else to think, oh, well, my experience is going to be your experience and that you should sort of be wishing for people to die on you. In my experience, night and day. Um, when that pressure was off and I didn't have to take care of him anymore. And yet I was still so caught up in that this is the way my life is going to be that even though my life had completely radically changed and I was able to do things because I wasn't spending the energy on them wasting and really wasting the energy. And because people with a point personality have this sort of finite amount of energy to spend on people um you know i was wasting it on them and i couldn't do anything for myself at all except i mean seriously that's when i was doing the half marathon training because i would be able to go out for an hour and i really unsafe but it's completely true i wouldn't bring a phone or anything because thank god i had an hour without having people calling me up I wasn't you know afraid every time I went to bed you know am I going to have to be called into the ER because guess what it was happening at least once a week that I was getting getting sent I had to go to the ER to take care of one of the three of them when that stopped I still in my head it was continuing um I could not break from the idea that this is life and this is how it's going to be. And um, again, that caused major depression because I couldn't see a way in any way, shape or form. I couldn't see anything I could do. Well, except, you know, not, not be alive at all anymore. Um, could not see a way out. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't, I could not, I mean, it sounds bizarre. I and mean, it's like, I'm not a stupid person, you know, I, I could not imagine that 
say I would outlive my parents. I mean, I was working like a dog to get my son, you know, to graduate high school and to go, could not imagine that he wouldn't, for as long as his life, you know, as long as he lived, that he wouldn't still need me daily to micromanage his life, which, you know, he probably could use some of that, to be honest. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't, I couldn't get past it. That is a form of personal presentism that you can't get out of it. And it seems to me that that's pretty common with people with avoiding personality disorder. I think it's one of the reasons why, you know, like they say that, you know, as a subgroup, for instance, least likely to ever get divorced because, you know, I mean, it's sort of like the mage bed and I have to lie in it, but it's not even that. It's not even like, okay, I said I was going to do this and I'm going to have to stick it out to the end. That's part of it. But also it's, you can't think that anything you do is going to make a positive impact. It doesn't matter. Stay married in a terrible marriage get divorced, you're going to, it's going to be the same. Why go through all that stress if it's going to be the same before or after? Can't imagine anything different, better. You're stuck in the, what you see in front of you right now. And I wish I had an answer. Usually when I make these videos, I try to make an I just try to, hey, this is what you can do. Other than being aware. I don't, I don't know what you can do. And I mean, again, in my case, I would have therapists that would say, Hey, look, you wanted to do these things. You are making progress toward that. These are changes that you have done in your life because I would not be able to recognize or acknowledge any change whatsoever. I you just feel like wherever you are right now, what you're doing right now is forever. And obviously, you know, most people with avoidant personality disorder have, you know, something that they really wish they, they would change and could change. Um, and if you feel like it's just, you can't even conceptualize a change happening, then obviously that leads to, you know, situational depression. Um... So, be aware of it and see if there's something that you can do. Um, in my case, like when I, I had a therapist that would keep track of it for me, um, and uh, I had these major life shifts that should have been horrible, but actually turned out to be good for me, unfortunately. But that's my family. That's how it is. Anyway, um, let's see if there's something else that you could do. Maybe if you, um, had a diary that you were actually looking up and I, I have, I use Google photos, um, and they'll just pop up, you know, pictures of this from two years ago or whatever. Um, maybe you can use that. Maybe you could, you know, I don't, I don't know, the, the tracking of something. And because it's really hard to see when you're changing as a person, it's very hard to notice that within yourself. Um, but try because if you can break, you know, internally from feeling like what you're doing right now is forever. Um, and that there's no change and that no change has ever happened and no change ever will happen in the future. I mean, that's crazy, obviously. And yet that's, that's why, um, sometimes they say people with avoidant personality disorder, especially as a person, as that particular personality disorder, that it's, it's, it gets in your head so much. It's almost a delusion. It's nearly that level 
that it doesn't matter. You know, you have somebody absolutely give you a stack of information that disproves it and says something completely different to what you're thinking about yourself. You know, you've got tons and tons and tons of things saying completely opposite and it doesn't matter. You get stuck there. Um, thinking about yourself a certain way and it, you, you know, find a way in any way to dismiss anything that's said different than, you know, this avoidant thoughts going in, in the back of your head. It's the same with this, you know, if, so if you can find a way to track changes that you're making, real changes. And I mean, so, you know, I don't know. I mean, I think, I think that's one of the reasons why I do, I have hobbies that are visual hobbies where you complete them. Like I do puzzles. I do um, cross stitch. Um, I haven't done that for a while. Um, but I have in the past. I, I just don't have time to do it right now. Um, things like that. That, that. I can see progress is being made then you know that's uh that's helpful to me to see that you know even if it's trivial and stupid that i'm i'm doing something that is changing over time and i am changing slightly over time because it's so hard to recognize it's so hard to track but try and maybe it will help you sort of lift any, you know, depression type um, symptoms that you have just enough to give you enough of a break that you can just do a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And maybe it will help you get to wherever you need to be in your life, whatever you want. And I mean, I don't mean like going from zero to a hundred. I mean, from zero to point zero two toward a hundred, you know, it might be a snail's pace and it might be not only that, but you have to change what your end goal is. Maybe your end goal is something that was dictated to you by society, your family, media. It's not actually what you want really but you're quote unquote supposed to want it. You know, that's, that's part of it too. Anyway. So if you, if you're, oh, if you try to be aware that whatever you're doing right now is going to change and you do have a slight amount of control over how that changes, which direction it's going to go then it will help you to stay out of the pit. It will help you to move in any direction. Sometimes moving in any direction, seem, even if it seems like it's going backward, you get momentum and you can make the next change and the next change and you can eventually get going in the direction that you want to be going in. Thank you.